Let's suppose that there's a vast, hugely powerful force that nobody can withstand. And this immense force is always active and in furious motion. It never rests. It's like a slowly flowing river that can eventually carve the Grand Canyon out of solid rock. But that comparison doesn't really do it justice. The force I'm talking about is much more formidable than any river or ocean or glacier or any other natural phenomenon. Now, in trying to achieve your life's goals, would you prefer to fight against this great force? Would you want to struggle against this mighty power that has all the odds overwhelmingly in its favor? Or would you rather enlist this great power in your cause and make the inevitable work for you instead of against you? Take your time before answering. Think it over. By the way, time is that great power I'm talking about. Time is the mightiest force in the world, or even in the universe. Of course, the answer to the question I posed is very obvious. Why would you ever choose to fight time when you could have time on your side? Who wouldn't want to harness the great river of time that flows through all of life? Why wouldn't you want to use the power of time to generate power in every area of your existence, to turn the turbines of your hopes and dreams, to charge your every aspiration with lightning bolts of electricity. Well, there is only one way to make time work for you, not against you, and that's with patience. Patience. There's a type of person for whom everything is undertaken out of desire to achieve a goal. They prepare food in order to eat it, not just for the fun of being in the kitchen. They start a business in order to make money. They exercise in order to get in shape. I'm sure that some of these people are very successful and they are certainly highly organized. But in my opinion, a person of truly strong character sees success as an adventure, not as a point with an estimated time of arrival. The latter approach to me is impatient thinking. Impatient thinking can lead a person into some very big mistakes. First of all, when you are always looking somewhere else, whether it's down the road or up toward the top of the mountain or off toward the left field fence, where you're hoping to hit that grand slam home run, when you're looking off in the distance like that, you often miss what's under your very own nose. That means the pleasure and fun of living which come in the here and now get overlooked for something that not only isn't here yet, but might never arrive. True patience is more than just a waiting game. Patience doesn't mean you sit around hoping for something to happen. Patience is not a passive quality. Sometimes patience can mean doing something else entirely, thinking about another venture, taking off in a different direction, while you give events a chance to run their course. All through his long career on the screen, John Wayne never felt he got the credit and recognition he deserved for his skills as an actor. Yes, his films were consistently successful at the box office, and even today, John Wayne is still the number one favorite movie actor in the United States. But a big following among moviegoers didn't translate into critical esteem or the respect of his peers. That's what the Duke wanted, and he felt he deserved it too. Then in the last years of his life, he made a movie called True Grit, in which he played a drunken, one-eyed, old U.S. Marshal named Rooster Cogburn. That portrayal got John Wayne the Oscar he'd been waiting 40 years for. It wasn't the kind of high and mighty hero role he'd played when he was young that finally got him his award, but it was a role that he'd waited for all his life, and he didn't even know it was coming. There's no area of human activity that requires more patience than raising children. If you haven't got patience when you start out in this, you're going to have to learn it one way or the other. A baby is born after nine months. If the future mother is tired of pregnancy before the time has expired, well, that's too bad because there's still two months to go, whether she likes it or not. And when the child does arrive, he or she grows and develops at a pace that's quite beyond the parent's control. 
Parents who try to force a child's development are asking for trouble. And this is one point on which psychology and common sense are in complete agreement. We've all heard of parents who think they can create another Einstein by giving their two-year-old a book on astrophysics. Or that if a child is made to play the piano for an hour a day, it will bring about the second coming of Mozart. None of this works, of course. And it also ignores the fact that all real prodigies developed completely according to their own timetables. And even then, the result was usually not exactly what one might have hoped for. Mozart, for example, had a very difficult later life, and he died young, in part because he grew up so much sooner than other children. He never really had a childhood, and at 30, he was already an old man. Anyway, it doesn't take textbooks on physics or hours of music or any other kind of force to teach something effectively to children. It just takes one thing. It takes patience. It may seem like a callous comparison, but there's a sense in which raising children is like any other investment. So much depends on when you need to cash in your chips. If you're in a hurry, if you need to see results tomorrow, you're putting a lot of pressure on everybody, and there's likely to be a great deal of disappointment. But if you can afford to wait, you can ride out the hard times and eventually realize a profit. The odd thing is, sometimes waiting for years is easier than it is to wait for a few days or even a few minutes. None of us felt too strained because we had to wait 12 years to go through grammar school, middle school, and high school before getting out. Or at least the first 11 and a half years didn't strain my patience. But ask me to wait 45 minutes for a plane flight or 20 minutes in the waiting room of a dentist's office. And if you catch me on the wrong day, it's almost more than I can handle. We all find ways to wait for the next paycheck, but how many can wait patiently in a checkout line in a crowded supermarket? How many people can stand and wait quietly for an overdue train on a railroad platform. It's as though there are two kinds of patience, the kind that sets you up for the long term and gives you the promise of a better and richer day after tomorrow. Then there's the other kind, the sort of patience that helps you remain sane and sociable while you're waiting in line or watching the clock or waiting for a pot of water to boil. These kinds of patience so different and yet so much the same, meld into your character and have a fundamental effect on your physical constitution. Any doctor will tell you that it's better for you and everyone around you if you don't get exasperated with little things, if you don't fly off the handle at every annoyance and stick in your way. It keeps your blood pressure down and your friends and neighbors happy if you can greet life's little problems with equanimity and patience, because almost all problems can be solved if only you take the time to see them and think them through. That's very easy to understand and it's very easy to say, but it takes strong character to put it into practice. I'm never sure what to think when people say, I want to make a million dollars by the time I'm 40, or I want to retire by the age of 45. This combination of goals plus deadlines strikes me as short-sighted and maybe even a bit naive. It takes a worthwhile goal and subjects it to an imposed timetable. While you might have an idea of what a million dollars would mean to you, or you might have really exciting plans for your life after you hang up the tie and business suit, I don't see how a person can reasonably expect to know who or what he will be or think or feel at some arbitrary moment in the future. This kind of thinking misses the whole point of success. The real payoff in financial and worldly success isn't the result of an amount of money divided by the age you are when you get it, or some other actuarial formula. The real payoff is found in the qualities of character you develop along the way. There's a story about a young man who had a very old and rich uncle. When the uncle died, the young man was called to the office of his attorney and told that he'd been left a huge fortune. To collect it, however, he first had to run a certain errand which was described on a slip of paper. 
It seemed simple enough, but when the young man tried to accomplish it, this first task turned into another, and then another. As he pursued his uncle's final request, the young man was led into foreign lands and exotic adventures and untold dangers. More years passed, and the young man nearly lost track of how and even why he was on this long journey, and he could hardly imagine what its end might be. At last, the Odyssey led him back into the very same lawyer's office where it had begun. I'm here to collect my inheritance, said the heir, no longer a young man, but a much wiser one. The lawyer smiled. As your uncle intended, you've already collected it in the places you've been and the things you've learned. And again, as he intended, it will last you for a lifetime. Success that comes too easily or too quickly almost never lasts. For people who achieve that kind of success, there's always a lurking feeling that they haven't really earned it. And that feeling eats away at their character. If they're lucky and smart, they create some new challenge for themselves in a totally unfamiliar field. These people have to build their character in order to survive their sudden good fortune, and that's a kind of character building that's done in an emergency. In fact, it's a true case of the cart coming before the horse. This doesn't require patience, because there is no waiting or planning or even expectation involved. It's more a test of a person's upbringing than a test of character. We've seen how often the qualities of a strong character demand the presence of opposite qualities in an almost paradoxical way. Patience is no exception. 